During the past few years, I've made over 50 films and I've changed a few different equipment from gimbal to tripod to slider to even drone. And from that experience, I've changed a few different cameras and my setup is very different now compared to a couple of years ago. But today, I think it'd be good to go through my entire film kit list in terms of the camera, the gimbal, the little attachment. I'm also going to go through the reasoning behind each item that I have, how I transition from one system to the other to now, and hopefully that helps you to decide what kind of film kit you need for your films. So to sit tight, it's going to be a long video as I go through each item. First, the camera, which is the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. Now, I've been using this camera for just over a year, and I love it because it's compact, you'll be able to put it on a gimbal, and it's got built-in ND, which means you can get those beautiful shots during any outdoor scenes. The color this camera produces is super cinematic, and I think it's probably the closest you can get to Ari. I've also wrapped this camera with a cage from Small Rig. It's got a number of different screw holes, which you'll see that comes really useful later in the video. Now onto the lens. This is my first set of cine lens I've ever owned. Before that, I was using photography lenses. The image quality produced was still really good, but with the cine lens, you can see there's a clear difference in terms of its sharpness and the difference in color. So the two cine lenses I have are the Zeiss CP3 35mm, which I use quite often, and the 18mm, uh, which I use when I need a really wide angle. They aren't actually that heavy and they have the same weight, so balancing on the gimbal makes it a lot easier. The gimbal I'm using here is the DJI RS3 Pro. Because of the way this system sets up, which you'll find out in a bit, I actually moved away from tripod as much as I can. With a bit of practice, of course, you can come up with some really smooth looking shots. And it's almost always sit on the gimbal ready to go, so all I have to do is pick up and shoot the film. At the bottom of the gimbal, I've attached two small rig handles because otherwise you have to hold the battery grip with less control, whereas when you hold from both sides, it's easier to maneuver. There are four accessories that work together. This is a DJI LiDAR rangefinder. So this is a LiDAR and here is a small camera. Here's a DJI focus motor to pull focus. And underneath here is the DJI video transmitter, which sends a signal to this monitor here. What this means is that I don't need anyone to pull focus for me. The LiDAR will see what's in front and it will do it all by itself, which is a game changer for anyone who's got low budget and can't afford too many crew members on set. It's not 100% always accurate, but it's good enough for most of the time. Now, originally I powered all those accessories through the gimbal, as you can see from here, but there were two problems. One, the power draws is a lot and it goes dead within probably half an hour. And two, because the number of limited ports on the gimbal, I was only able to either use the video transmitter or the LiDAR system. What that means is that I can either use a LiDAR without the monitor, but it has autofocus, or I don't have the autofocus and someone can pull the focus through the monitor wirelessly. But what I really want is to have those two options working together so that I can either decide to pull focus wirelessly or use the autofocus whenever possible. The solution is to get this DJI LiDAR rangefinder to DJI transmission cable hub. With this hub, I can attach it to the bottom of the camera right here. To power all these accessories, I use this newer battery, which is a V-Lock, and it's even got a USB connection outside here too. But I ran into another problem. Originally, I attached the battery to the handle here with the cable connected to the power, but the gimbal actually wasn't able to move freely because of the position of the battery. So instead, I decided to attach to the top of the camera using this V-lock mount, which slides in quite nicely. This way, the gimbal is able to move quite freely without hitting anything or tightening from the wires. From this hub, I connect one wire to the LiDAR system, one wire to the focus motor, two connections into the video transmitter, one for the power, one for the USB. The DTAP cable goes into the battery at the top. And finally, a USB cable goes into the gimbal for the communication between all the devices. The monitor itself is powered by a battery at the back here. And the two grips on the side can be taken off quite easily. So you can use it just as a monitor. But when they're attached, you can use one on the right to pull focus. 
and the left one to control the gimbal movement. Now here's a couple of cool features. On the monitor here, you can switch on the LiDAR waveform and also the focus meter, which provides you a lot of information how it's being focused and what the distance is. The other cool feature is you can actually switch on the little camera on the LiDAR so you can see where it's being focused and select your focus points. For storage, I use the WISE 2TB SSD. It's really reliable for what I need to record without any frame dropping. I can quite easily record up to Q1 or even Q0 on Blackmagic RAW at 6K resolution. I then attach the SSD on top of the camera holding by the small rig. And this completes the setup. The option to control the camera wirelessly from the monitor or just grab the gimbal and go. Now sit back and enjoy this footage that I shot with the same setup. Those are all the items that I use from day to day and I guess it'll change again within a year perhaps. Some of the items I mentioned today I will put a link in the description below so that you can take a look at the products. Until next time.